shine streaming through the windows there. Yeah. It's always nice. Yeah, it's been and... it's like oh yeah, we're recording. Welcome oh, to the over everybody. I'm Barry Edwards. And I'm Earl Garrison. Yeah, so it's been real nice here after a string of Arctic weather. So that's that's great. We are leaving for Florida this afternoon. And wow back just in time to do the next show and uh the but the beautiful thing about this the point is i'll tell you what i'm really glad that it's going to be warm while we're gone and i hope that we're flying into a a halfway decent day because there's nothing worse than leaving sunny warm colorful florida and then two hours later descending into a gray apocalypse oh that is uh, i'm telling you it's it's it is. It's terrible. So I hate yeah. when that happens that our intention, we go every year at this time because our intention is coming back at the beginning of March. March can be anything, a mix of anything and everything. It sure can. But it's it just it's terrible when you hit the downside of that uh, roulette wheel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Put on black, it comes mean. up red. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I've uh, I remember living in Cleveland and, and finally getting to go on that business trip to Florida mm. in the middle of winter. And it's yeah. like, Oh my gosh, this is paradise. And then I get down there and I'm, I, I remember the first one was in Fort Lauderdale and I actually was staying in a hotel room right across from the beach. And the entire time I spent indoors, I never got to go to the beach. It was like a whirlwind trip where I was oh. in meetings in, inside the entire time. And then boom, I had to fly home and it was all over. And I flew into that gray overcast dreary, thing and it was like that for the next several months and i was so oh. bummed it was just yeah. like you know what it was like it was like being a starving man and they put a steak in front of you and they say you can't eat it <laughs> it's on the other side of the window <laughs> yeah exactly that's it's where the beach was i did the same thing a few years ago i had a business trip in fort lauderdale my hotel was on the other side of the beach i gotta shut the door i forgot to do that I was probably the same <laughs> the same beach i i remember looking out the window and thinking Oh my God, that's paradise out there. Get back to work. And it was all over from there. So, you know, I mean, that's how it is in business is you, you're not there to go on vacation. You're there to, you're there to actually right. do that. But it is pretty nice when you travel to get out there and enjoy the scenes and everything. No, I, I would say um, if you're going to travel for business someplace nice, if at all possible, book an extra day or two. You know, I wasn't really intending on talking about this in our upfront uh, career self-improvement section, but there's a lot to be said for ta- for downtime, whether oh, it's a vacation, gosh, right? even taking a half day now and then off of work so you can take care of things and get that stress off your back. Um, no kidding. But I think a lot of times, and I think it's happened here with us, is – you don't realize that you need the downtime until it's, you know, it really hits the fan. And uh, I think we've had a lot of stress and we can't, we both can't wait to just have nothing to do except what we're going to occupy our, our time with, you know? Right. Right. So yeah. I think it's really important. I do too. Life is short. You know, I mean, uh, Hey, I wanted to tell you before you transition, Go uh, gosh, you know, uh, the, the yesterday was uh kind of a traumatic day at the end of the day uh, I started hearing you know fire engines and stuff like that but I wasn't really paying attention I was in my office working and Anne Marie yells hey Merle there's something going on outside and we we go out there one of our neighbors uh uh houses was on fire and uh I mean it was a it's a few doors down it was a raging fire I mean it it was uh apparently they were doing some uh, construction in the kitchen and I heard that there was some welding that had to happen. And, um, you know, now when you hear welding in the kitchen, those two things don't seem to go together. I'm not sure what was happening there, but it started a fire. And um, so we live in townhouses here. So of course the fire did, spread to the place right next door as well so two families were affected by this and it was a it was a pretty serious i mean great big flames were coming out of the top of the roof the firemen had to uh uh, axe their way through the roof so there's a big big hole in the roof and of course water damage all over the place and i'm 
I heard that the people that were doing the construction uh, didn't have a license to do that kind of construction oh. or something like that. So this is this is the thing. It's your home. Um, I've heard this a few times now where, you know, you, you hire somebody to do some contractor work and they don't have the credentials to do it and they screw up your house. And that can happen in, in, in it happened to my neighbors in the blink of an eye. Well, it's not just screwing up your house. There's going to be lawsuits being filed at this point. Well, uh, it's, 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 this is why you get insurance, right? I mean, right. this is what insurance is for. I have to say the two families that were involved were way more calm than I think I would have been. Wow. Um, they seem to handle it with a lot of dignity, but uh, all the neighbors came out. It was around five o'clock our time mm -hmm. when that happened. And then uh, in the midst of all of that, uh, one of our neighbors down the, down the way, uh, we saw his son out there and, um, and we said, well, well, how's your dad? Uh, now Skippy is uh, sort of the neighborhood social butterfly and he is a riot. Uh, I, I, I don't think you met him when he was here, but I just no. love this guy. He uh, born the same year as my mom. He's just a character. He's fun. He's always in a good mood and we're teasing each other all the time and everything. And Anne Marie asked, how's your dad doing? And he said, he passed away the other day. And uh, it was just sad. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's a tough thing when you lose your your friend and everything. Anne Marie and I kind of took that hard. But you know, it is part of life. But um, you know, it's uh, it's one of those reminders too that uh, life is short, and you talked about downtime. You you've got to take time to smell the roses, and I got to yeah. say that guy took time to smell the roses, and he left a great mark on the world. So his name was Skippy, and uh, I know he's in heaven smiling right now. Oh uh, man, that's a that's a very heartfelt story. I like how you found the positive in that. And gave us that reminder, you know, the last couple of weeks, we've opened up the show talking about people that have passed away. And um, that's the thing you get over 50. And then, you know, one of the favorite pastimes is looking at the obit section in the newspaper. Um, well, you know, it's true, right? I mean, we're getting to that time now where more and more people, uh, you know, are, we make that transition. This is actually a part of life. And we have to come to grips with that. I think last week, I was talking about being surprised that, hey, man, 15 years, 70, we're looking at 70, yeah. you know, but uh, instead of looking at it that way, I was talking to somebody, and it might have been you who was talking about living in the moment. I think we were talking about that last week. Yeah, living we in the moment, right? Right. Uh, right? What a great show that was last week talking about joy so. and, and, mm -hmm. and being able to live in that moment. And it's uh it's a key it's a real key to joy in life and uh, that's all we got right i mean it that's is. really all we have in the end you know you made me think about uh something that's funny in a dark way is a couple of years ago when my wrestling coach passed uh my buddy jay and i went and you know god bless him he organized a, a bunch of us to go up to uh his wake and jay mm. goes to me on the way in he goes man you know, years ago, you used to be, I'd only see you at the weddings. And he goes, now I only see you at the funerals. Isn't that a trip? And, and that's, that's so true. true. Remember how that true. was? Right? It seemed like every week somebody was getting married. Yeah. And now, now it's the opposite. <laughs> they're it's going, very they're true. They're taking the big journey now. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Hey, so check this out. So, yeah, going on a plane here in a few hours after the show. And that's a big deal. Well, especially because I got a cold a few days ago. You're kidding me. I had no idea how, I don't know, maybe the gym inadvertently, but you know, I'm always wearing a mask. I'm doing the hands all the time. Right, and all right. that happens though. Now I normally, I'm the kind of guy that gets at least two colds a, a winter normally, but right, right. You know, this year we're so under wraps, uh, but yeah, the timing. So I'm thinking, you know, the, I'm worried about two things. One, you know, first sign of uh, sniffles. It's like, I got COVID. You know, <laughs> and fact, uh, I think the whole world is trained that way now. We are. That's my point. And then the other is, oh, my God, if I so much as sneeze on that plane or a car. You, yeah, they're going to throw you out of the plane. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to the store. I, 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 
uh, stock up on pharmaceuticals over the counter pharmacy. And I got this Zycam. There's a few different things on the shelves that say uh, guaranteed or scientifically tested to shorten the span of a cold by 40%, something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you start taking it at the beginning and I chose to go with the Zycam nasal spray and I really think that works. Normally, first of all, this cold never really got bad. It was just congestion. Right. And, uh, never, uh, you know, and with that comes a cough because just the, it's kind of related the phlegm going down the back of your throat and all the other disgusting stuff, but never an upset stomach, a headache, uh, no temperature. Uh, right, so right. I, uh, I started taking that Zycam and that was only two days ago and I feel a lot better. I'm taking decongestants, uh, cough drops, and we'll bring those on the plane as well. Uh, but so, I think I'll be fine. I'll also take some, I've been planning to take some NyQuil right before I get on the plane too, just to, oh, additional decongestant and cough suppressant and make me tired, hopefully. And I, I don't want to get in a coughing fit is all I'm saying. Just, I don't want, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I think I'm doing fine. And I went and got a COVID test. Oh, uh, okay. That's good. Yeah. And I and knew I didn't have it. Like I said, I only you got the results a, already. Yeah, I, there's a rapid COVID test that I took at CVS. I got the results within an hour. Oh, and wow. Negative. They take your temperature right there on the spot. Normal. Uh, so, you know, everything's all fine in those regards. Hey, that's pretty cool to know, though, that you can get a, these rapid tests now. I mean, yeah. remember when this all that. started that right. uh, it would take sometimes several days to it's over free. a week and it's free. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, OK, but, so. Can you tell me, like, what was that like? What what did you nothing, nothing to it? All right. So first of all, I didn't know that it was available either. I Googled uh, right. COVID testing, free COVID testing. And then, you know, it put in your zip code. Boom. There's a CVS uh, three, three to choose from. Pick what time you're available. Now you could do the rapid or the normal one. The normal one, mm -hmm. you'll get the results within a couple of days. Uh, the rapid one within 15 minutes to an hour or two. And um so I went with the rapid and uh, you select your time, you drive right up there, you never leave your car, they have a special marked off spot in the parking lot COVID testing zone. Huh. And they even have a little booth uh, that this woman comes out full medical guard face shield and everything, you know, you'd think she's gonna for, for a moonwalk. And um, <laughs> she hands, she was so nice too. So, so nice. Um, and there was nobody else there. So, I mean, you know, the COVID's so down now. I don't know. Maybe if it was a month ago, there, it would have been a wait. I don't know. There was, right. I was the only car there. Huh. And um, so she hands me this uh, swab and a, and a tube, like a test tube kind of thing that's sealed. And she goes, take the swab, put it uh, about an inch and a half up your nostril, each nostril for 30 seconds, run it around and around and around. Right. And uh, so you do it yourself. It's not you. We've heard the horror stories. How yeah, I've seen the it. giant Q-tip up into your brain. <laughs> yeah. Now you do this yourself. And, yeah. and she's like, you know, she walks away like this is a big personal thing or something, which I guess <laughs> yeah. some people would feel that way. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't a big deal at all. So then you put it in that little test tube, the sealed test tube thing, seal it up and give it to her. And so it was super easy, super fast, right. free. Incur if anybody has any doubts about it, don't hesitate to go get your test done. Wow. Yeah. Huh, that sounds easy. And so they just call you or something when... Uh yeah. They, the they called, are, they yeah. emailed, and they put it on my chart. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, good operation. Hey, yeah, good job. But uh, positive things. Going on the, you know, as you're going on a trip and everything, yeah. you've done all your due diligence. Yeah. So it's just, uh, but Good to yeah. see your mom, man. She's, uh, she's an at-risk person. She hasn't even been vaccinated yet. So even still, with any remnants of the cold, even, I'm going to be very careful. I'm not even yeah. going to give her this cold, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, well, what a time to get a cold. I mean, that's yeah. the thing is that most people get a cold, you know, once or twice a year, they're dealing with a cold and now, boy, you get a cold and uh, <laughs> it's scary, you know, like it, yeah. it's, it's like you said, at any time you get a cough or, or a cough happens or even a sneeze. And I don't even think a sneeze is a COVID thing, but if you sneeze, yeah. like everybody looks 
<laughs> what was that? <laughs> right. Where's the hand sanitizer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, I was telling uh, Anne Marie was telling me about uh, uh, you know it's weird when you go to the store. It, I don't know about where you are, but here it's it's just very weird. Everybody's walking around um, with masks on and everything, which is the sure, the, the sure. deal. But yeah. it, it, you know, we're all kind of. <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, what was it's that? Like, COVID? <laughs> <laughs> what, even, what is this contagious? <laughs> um, it, it, we're all kind of scared of each other. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we're all looking at each other like, don't you get too close to me now, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see you merging over here like five yeah. feet, six feet, buddy. You know how we are. Yes. And uh, everybody's got a thing on their mask. You got a, you know, a sign or something. It's just a weird time. And so somebody got really close to Anne Marie in the checkout line. And she was saying, well, what do you say if somebody gets too close to you? I had you it happen a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it's it's one of those things. And I said, and well, she here. was coughing. She was hacking up along. I, <laughs> that's interesting. That's uh -huh. terrible. Uh -huh. I told Anne Marie, here's what you do. You go. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 that's, I said, I would leave <laughs> I would yeah. get back out of there. Boy, I don't want any of that on me. Yeah, so, uh, there's there's the, the whole psychological part of when you're in a line, people are so conditioned. And I noticed this more in Europe than than in the United States is, man, they're just always pushing you. They're just, you know, yeah. I'm in a line and that means we are trying to get in somewhere. Yeah. And that's all they're focused on. So this whole six feet thing is very counterintuitive to a uh -huh. lot of people. It's like, I need to be pressing forward. You know what I mean? And I yeah. don't want anyone cutting. You know, there's that too. So it's, it's kind of it's ridiculous. I think uh, that whole mentality of, I don't want anybody cutting. I mean, I don't you know. know. Does, does that happen a lot? Uh, I had it happen one time. And of course, of all places, Walmart. And I'm not even going to talk about it. It's uh, it's infuriating and I'm going to sound like a bad guy. But uh, yeah, I so blatant and mm. There, I, I, there's I, I, a lot of entitled attitudes running around in a wall. Okay. All right. I got a story on that because I had a situation Anne Marie and I were in line one time and it was like Halloween. So we were at one of those Halloween super stores, right. You know, right, that right. are only open during Halloween and everybody's right. in there. It's a big rush. So we're, so we're in this huge line. Okay. We finally make it to the front and this guy comes up to us. We're, we're, we're going to be next. And the, this guy comes up with his little daughter and he says, excuse me, do you mind if I cut in front of you? My daughter has to go to the bathroom and it's an emergency and there's no bathrooms in here. And I said, yes, I mind. And oh. Anne Marie was like, oh my God. And I was like, and, and the guy's like, but, but I go, well, first off, there's all these people behind me that you're cutting in front of as well. And uh, do you think they mind? And he goes, I, I don't know. He asked somebody, he asked Anne Marie, do you mind? And she goes, no. <laughs> like, oh, thanks a lot, Anne Marie. <laughs> and I, and uh, anyhow, but, so then because Anne Marie said no, the guy got, <laughs> the guy got in front of me. <laughs> And I was so ticked off right there. And uh, anyway, this was a long time ago. I'm over it. <laughs> uh, uh, but I was like, wait a second. I have kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is your kids going to the bathroom is like, let me put it a different way. My kids having to go to the bathroom as a dad, that's my responsibility. Before I leave the house, I got to make sure my kids go to the bathroom so something like that doesn't happen. It's not everybody else's responsibility so that I got to let you in line because you didn't take your responsibility as a parent. That's your responsibility. And I just have a problem with that. If the kids got to go to the bathroom, go find a bathroom and come back. That's that's what you do. That's what you do as a parent. You don't put your parental uh, thing on everybody else. So that was my thing. And uh I don't but know I, how good I, you I came, came off. off with that. I came off like a super jerk right there. <laughs> but I, 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 thought, I didn't say But anything. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, look, if it's me, I'm not going to burden everybody else. I uh, guess that maybe that's just me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I don't want to comment on it because I don't know how well you came off on that one. Yeah, well, I, 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 I can tell you I did not come off well. And I yeah. think that but I do believe that the people standing behind me probably thought, 
yeah, <laughs> what the heck? Why, why, why do you, you know, hey, we all have to wait in line. Why is it that you get to jump in line just because you have kids? You talked about the entitled attitude. That's yeah. what, mm. that's what it is. Oh, I have kids. Everybody else move out of my way. Um, you know, I have a stroller, you know, so what I ran into your ankle. I mean, yeah. th these are the kind of things that happen and you're not entitled. You're just like everybody else. It, it, you have to be courteous towards everybody else. Just, just like the other way around. You know what that makes me think of is you say, Hey, you're not just cutting in front of me. You're cutting in front of all these other people that I've always had this pet peeve about, uh, the, the stoplights. And I always hear people like, oh, my God, people are so uptight, beep, beeping the horn and everything, uh, you know, relax. And I feel the same way you did. It's like you're not it's not all about you. If you're at the front waiting for a stoplight, you have there's a responsibility to all the people behind you. And if you're playing on your phone, yeah, I'm going to beep the horn because now the guy five cars back doesn't make the light because of you and is running late because of you. I'm saying I always said this. I mean, we're social animals. We have a responsibility to play nice together in our society. And if you're at the front of a red light, then it's your responsibility to pay attention to it, not not be browsing on your damn phone. Well, first off, what are you doing on your phone anyhow while you're yeah. driving? I mean, that's yeah. that's a serious problem that's happening out there. And, it is. And it's like out. I don't know. We looked. We we check it out. It did every stoplight. At least half the people are looking at their phone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's yeah. like this is this is terrible. This is a terrible thing. Get off your phone. Drive yeah. the car. It's how it's dangerous enough to drive without your phone being a distraction but i mean you're right this is a rampant thing we there, i don't know what the solution is i do geez, what what is your solution well the self-driving cars that that is gonna have to be the norm sooner rather than later because you can't we can't shame people into not looking at their phones while they're driving this is an epidemic it's uh only going to get worse and worse and it's the way it's going to go. So the self-driving cars is going to save us in mm. many, many ways. And we're going to look back on it. Like, can you believe like 10, 100,000 people used to die every month or whatever in car accidents? And now it's like three, mm. you know, that, that you're making be. a good point. I, yeah. I just, I, I, I like the point you're making. And at the same time, I feel like I don't, I don't want to get in a self-driving car. Like for, part of the fun of driving is that you're driving. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? Like, and not, I'm not in a train or something. And hopefully within our, in our lifetimes, you'll have that option either way, as you do with Tesla's. Re remember that song by Rush, Red Barchetta? I, no, that, I that, don't. Oh, it, it's a story uh, about the same thing. It's a, uh, it, the guy goes to visit his uh, his uncle who has a uh, a sports car, like a, a, a fuel burning sports car. And I guess at this time, it's a futuristic song. They don't have like cars you could drive by yourself and have that freedom of driving. So mm. he gets in this car and he, and he experiences it. And the song's all about it's a great song, actually, called oh. Red Barchetta. Oh. But, um, you know, it seems like you know, from what you just said, that that could happen someday. Oh, soon. It's, it's very soon. soon. I mean, I know, listening to Joe Rogan, he uh, he often uses his autopilot thing and uh, we'll sit there reading a book while he's so now you're supposed to be paying attention. I think maybe you're supposed to have your hands on the I heard him say that. Yeah. 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 So uh, they already have semi trucks that can make deliveries remotely, like remote control, if you want to call it that autopilot. So uh, that's going to kill the trucking industry. Kill it. Uh, we, we talked about that a few months ago. And uh, that's going to be very soon as well, because these things run 24 hours uh, a day. And um, they do without being paid other than, you know, the upfront technology. So and I remember thinking about that when we were coming back from uh, Nashville, looking on the freeway, as long as I could see, all I saw was truck, 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 all the way down there. Mm. All those people all day long. Uh, that whole industry will be displaced very soon. And they don't even know it yet. They really don't. Mm. So there's that. Hey, I was thinking about something else uh, uh, this morning when I woke up. I'm always, I got my earbuds in, laptop. I got the news on, having my coffee, as I always do every morning local news. And, oh, I got to take my earbuds out when it comes to the commercials. They're, oh, those commercials that half of them by far are local car 
sale places where you call the car lots and with the most obnoxious people that run <laughs> the most obnoxious commercial. What is up with that? The Did car you, commercials. Yes. I mean, it's Does always that, been like that, hasn't it? The car I guess. commercials. Yeah. yeah. Remember I, C. Miller, Chevrolet. Uh, you oh, hear? they're worse. Yeah, they're yeah, worse they're worse now. now. I mean, oh. I see them now where it's like, what are they thinking? We, we got one where it's like they're all in costumes. Like, Come on down. And they're there wearing all this crazy stuff yeah. and everything. And it's like, why? There's a pilgrim. There's a witch. There's a. Why are these people dressed like I don't even understand what I just saw, right? How is that inspiring me to buy a car, too? I'm not really sure. I even had to Google it and look it up because being a marketing, I'm wondering, like, is yeah, there yeah. something? Are these are these people all like, huh, well, you smart. know the rules that this is going to increase our sales by 25% if we right, make right. out of ourselves. I can't find anything to back it up. I just, I don't know. I think these people just feel like doing this. I don't know, man. Uh, it's you know, interesting that you looked it up. I, I, as a marketer, I never thought that, yeah, maybe there is something to that. I, I mean, you trying to take an unbiased look at it. When you see those people making fools of themselves, do you really want to go there and buy a car from them? No, I want to like find out what the address is so I can avoid the area. Totally. I, and I'm thinking gimmicks. I mean, if these people are in any g gimmick, like these uh, are carnies, des there you go. Desperate <laughs> enough to make a fool out of themselves. I don't think I want to be buying a car from them. right. It's talk about bait and switch, man. Yeah, I mean, This is going to happen to you over there. I totally get it, man. I, I just, uh, my lease ran out of my, my, my car, my, my recent car. So I just had to re up on a new one. And, um, uh, you know, just went through the whole car experience and everything. It's, you know, mildly stressful having to deal with this whole thing. And, but, you know, it's cool, uh, you know, we have, having a lease because you get the new car. And uh, so we got the new car smell thing. And I read in the news just today that the new car, they just did a study here in California, in Riverside. They just did a study to tell us that the, of course, the new car smell is going to kill you. Uh, oh, it's, it's it, right, but it's made that smell is coming from formaldehyde and benzene, which are two things that are very, um, uh, you know, toxic, poisonous yeah. to you. And, uh, so yeah, so that's what that smell is. It's benzene and it's, and it's formaldehyde. And they're saying that, uh, if you have a 20 minute commute, what, you know, one each way, mm -hmm. uh, that, it's like smoking uh, a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. They said that your, <laughs> your chance of inhaling carcinogens are like up increased by 10%. So they're saying open the window as much as possible in small, turn, turn on yeah. the, turn on the vent or when it's like two degrees in Cleveland, make yeah. sure you keep those windows open, <laughs> 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 but so, uh, enjoy that new car smell. Right. Uh, I did not know that. So if it doesn't smell like a cow pasture, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, so then I guess like you have the car that you purchased that you're just going to drive to death and then you rotate a car in a lease. Is that correct? Yeah. So you get like a three year lease and uh -huh. you, so you, you get a new car, which it, and then you have a certain amount of miles on that new car and you drive that until the end. And then you have a choice of either uh, ending the lease or re up it on a new lease or you could buy the car that you leased. I'm just wondering what your take on the philosophy is because car people do the math eight ways to Sunday and you can do it. I think individuals have to do it for themselves and it comes to meaning leasing versus buying. Right. I think a lot of it comes, most of it comes down to how many miles you put on a car a year. There's um, a lot of factors, actually. Yeah. One of the factors was that, um, uh, you, you know, the miles are, are definitely a factor. The other thing is the type of car that you get. Um, you know, I, I'm, I like a BMW, but if you buy a brand new BMW, it's like $50,000. Yeah. And, and I get the, the car payment on that is outrageous. It's a yeah. lot more affordable to, to lease the car. But this here's another thing that happened is that <clears throat> I, I kind of learned a lesson here with this type of car is that um, in, in the beginning of my original lease, I, I got into a terrible accident. And uh, of course, you know, insurance fixed it. It was, mm. it was almost better than new when I got it back. But um, when I I wanted to keep this car, I was looking at, at purchasing the car and 
and and it was still kind of expensive after three years but it's just a great car mm -hmm. and and i know it you know it's like i took really good care yeah. of it so this would be a good investment so when i go in there they're like oh uh we got this car fax and we can see it the car has been in a terrible wreck so you mm -hmm. might want to think about if you want to buy this because the the blue book on this is x but realistically with this car fax it's gonna ding you about fifteen thousand dollars and so the car the equity on the car was about fifteen thousand dollars less than the blue book as a result of the accident now so i had to think about that like what what makes sense if i go and buy a fifty thousand dollar car and get into an accident and want to sell it four years later it's going to depreciate by much more than yeah. the blue book value of it. And I'm standing there holding the bag on $15,000. So it, again, it depends on the, and now if I was looking at like a Ford or something like that, uh, that was a lot less money, let's say $15,000, uh, maybe that kind of a car would be, um, you'd want to purchase that car. Mm -hmm. there's, it, it, there's a lot of moving Items I understand. Here. My philosophy is, as somebody that doesn't put a lot of miles on cars, right. um, I strongly favor buying the car that is coming off of a three-year lease. Yeah, that's, me too. I mean, that's the, I like both ways. It's <laughs> like a, it's like a brand new car that somebody else took the big hit on. You know. So, so exactly. So my thing is that you know, typically I have to travel a lot, but mm. you know, I don't now but I know that's going to come back. So you want to have a good, reliable car that you can put miles on. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And then I have also, cause we have, we're a two car family here and I got, I have another car, which is my Ford Taurus, which is a 2000 Ford Taurus. <laughs> and that thing is still kicking, man. And it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still, I, I've taken great care of it, but it's 21 that's years old. That's the one that you took me up uh, flying through the mountains on. Yeah. Yeah. Country. You're all scared. I was, I was thinking that door is going to fly open and I'm going to shoot out over that mountain. The and that's what would happen if the door <laughs> flew open. You would shoot out over the mountain. <laughs> uh, but like I said, you know, so it's the best of both worlds for me. Uh, I don't have a car payment over here. It's nothing fancy. I can park it wherever. If somebody dings my door, I don't really care. Uh, but I only use that for local driving. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I let Anne-Marie drive the other car. She's safe in that car. It's reliable. She's not going to be in a bad situation uh, in a bad neighborhood or whatever. Uh, you know, she if she needs to floor it to get out of the way of a truck, that thing's got the power to do it. Yeah. And it just makes me feel secure that she can be in that car and I'm in this other car tooling around. I kind of like it. Well, I'll tell you, the, the Beamers are really safe cars. They're built like tanks. Oh, and they really are. Lisa just totaled one about a little over a year ago. That Were we doing the podcast and mention that? I, I don't know. I didn't know this. Well, then it must have been a year and a half ago. Okay. Or so because we've been doing this for about a year and a half and it was probably right, right before. And uh, yes, yeah, she pulled out and it was just a situation. She didn't see an oncoming car yeah. uh, on Fairmont. Accidents. Yeah, on Fairmont and Green. And uh, yeah, total uh, two Beamers beamer to beamer accident and wow. um yeah there was a situation with the other pe uh, people like they took off kind of on foot oh. or something to that. <laughs> oh man the guy didn't have his license or something oh geez. but her car uh was deemed totaled and she loved that car we both did it was like the perfect color and size and uh, so she's got another Beamer, even higher model, uh, but still missed the other one. Just couldn't find the exact same thing again, you know? So yeah. it's a bummer. But my point really to that is she was completely unscathed. So, you know, when we got into that accident too, and it was a bad one. Um, yeah. I mean, the car was almost unrecognizable after the accident. Uh, we It was me and Anne-Marie and my parents in yeah. the car not a scratch on any of us wow. and i mean and the other car too was a you know no one thank god no one got hurt in that it wasn't a bmw but still um you know i after that and i think if it had been the car i had before that it wouldn't have been the same outcome so i um, became a believer right there in this and the in what this uh, product brings to market you know, I was listening to Elon Musk on a podcast the other day. He was talking about the Tesla's uh, airbags. 
And he's talking about the, the intelligence of the Tesla in the first place. One thing I thought was really uh, interesting is he said, real soon, the Tesla, the newer models are going to be more about inter what kind of entertainment they're bringing you rather than the driving experience, because they're going to drive you completely, completely automated. He says, even now, when you get in the car and it's automatically in reverse, why? Because it knows there's something in front of you uh, or it's the last thing that you did as you pulled in going forward. So, of course, you want to go in reverse. And he says, huh. anytime you have to manually change something, we call that an error. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the thought process is how automated everything is. And he said about the air. So anyways, yeah, as things go on, it's going to be more about how do they entertain you and get you uh, productive during your commute than it is about the driving experience because you won't have one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> back to what you said a little yeah, bit ago. I don't like that. But he said about the <laughs> airbags. He goes, yeah. you that you wouldn't believe uh, the amount of research that they put behind them because they're they're way safer than a seatbelt or anything else. And he goes, if you want to put the seatbelt on, that you know that's fine, you know whatever. But the airbags detect uh, right away, measure your weight, even your sex, where you're sitting on the seat, uh, everything that. And they deploy differently as the, all those things are calculated. Really? Constantly being recalculated. Yeah. Wow. Because I know, yeah. I remember uh, early, uh, an early airbag experience I had was uh, my ex-wife, Tracy, got into an accident with the kids and Brandon was sitting in the front seat and that air, the airbags deployed and man, it knocked the crap out of him. I really? Mean, he, he was, his face was all messed up and, wow. the, and also gunpowder wounds. Really? Yeah, because that's, that's how the airbag ago. deployed was the yeah. uh, gunpowder. So the, mm. he had he had burns on him from that from the actual airbags. And I was like, you know, kind of horrified that what I don't I, I an accident's bad enough, but the airbag is the thing I'm afraid of. Yeah, not well, not in a Tesla these days. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a certain amount of standard that has to be reached of you know a one star rating minimum or whatever like that. He goes, yeah, we consistently get five stars, but we would get six if they had them. Uh, when Lisa's well. accident. I'm oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. They just go when, well above and beyond. When Lisa got into that accident, did her airbags deploy? I think so. Ours uh, didn't. Is that right? Yeah. I wonder why. I, I don't know, but I don't, I, we didn't need them because we, mm. we were totally fine <clears throat> without oh. them. But, um, you know, it was as if the front end absorbed all the impact uh, and, and really collapsed in. So it was it was a really interesting thing. And I thought, God, thank God the airbags didn't go off because we obviously didn't need them. And I, I know uh, um, I, I'd hate for somebody to be injured by the airbag unnecessarily if we're not being injured. You know, what well, I mean? it sounded like it worked right then. Yeah, like, I, I think so. That's what I'm trying to say is, yeah. Like, I think the technology going back to the Elon Musk yeah. thing is that this isn't just a press a button airbag goes off. It's right. a lot more. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot more ingenuity to it. Hit now. the brake a little too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Doc got it. Not again. <laughs> Hey, just uh, changing things up. But this is just something I saw yesterday. The NFL football team, Washington team football, otherwise known as the WTF team, announces That's really the name. They, they should <laughs> stick with it. Announces three name choices for the 2022 season. They're debating between uh, and they're going to pick one of these for the 2022 season. The generals, the justice, justice or rhinos. And I immediately. Oh, oh my God! Not the rhinos. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe that they're thinking about that. I know. Why, I know. why the rhinos? To go from the Redskins <laughs> to the rhinos. If That's there's hilarious. Anyone wondering what we're laughing about? It's the acronym of uh, minus the H for right. Republican and name only. Right, right. The Which, rhinos in Washington D.C. I I would vote for that. What like is 80 Mitt times. Romney's going to be their their mascot? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, uh the generals i think they would have to i think that's a great name 
Well, I think they have to clarify which side they were on in the uh, Civil oh War. Oh, my God. No kidding, right? They would have to put it in a mission statement for sure. Justice? I, I think it's <laughs> social justice warriors right That's away. That's terrible. That's a terrible name. I, it it but, wouldn't if it wasn't for the day and age we live in. I otherwise I think it would be a cool name. It would be a great name if it wasn't for the social justice in, implement, yeah. in, implications. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. Let's see. What else do we got? I um, I got all kinds of stuff. What do you got? Yeah. Uh, OK. Tiger Woods. Uh, how oh, about yeah. that? Wow. I mean, that was a that was a shocker, especially after, you know, the. <laughs> The whole thing that happened, you know, with the helicopter accident and, yeah. uh, you know, that we, we have these, you know, great celebrities that are here and, and Tiger Woods is a great one. Mm -hmm. And I was so concerned for his life uh, when when the news came out that he'd been in this accident and I was seeing his car before I knew any news about him. And I'm like, how did he live through that? I mean, it, you know what, Barry, it, the road that he was on looks a lot like that road I took you to the beach on. Oh, really? And he, 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 he apparently hit the center divide and <clears throat> bounced off onto the edge of the road, which uh, apparently was like a sort of a cliff and rolled down the hill with that. Uh, and it was a Hyundai that he was in. Genesis. Another car, another car that I know uh, they, that, that car, I had one, man, that thing was a tank. And yeah. so that, that car may have saved his life. It was a brand new one, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, it's not looking good for him to be out on the golf course again, let alone. I wonder if he's going to be able to walk normally again. Yeah, I would say <laughs> with no medical degree whatsoever. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to play golf again. Uh, he's yeah. had five back surgeries already. Now he's got to go through this and I, we haven't heard anything, but has he tweaked his back again in all this, you know, as well? I, I don't know. Uh, I think the news media has covered this quite well and thoroughly though, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I, I mean, I'm just glad the guy's gonna, you know, come out of it alive. Sure. And uh, apparently, you know, his head wasn't injured. He's he's fully in control of his his mind and everything, which is which is huge. And uh, I uh, I one thing I know about Tiger is, you know, you can't underestimate the guy. Mm, like you true. said, he's had five surgeries. Who knows if he could come back? And I've heard this said time and time again since the accident. If anybody could come back from this, it's him. Yeah, but geez, how much can one body take? I you don't know? know. I don't know. I, you know, it's just uh, character does have a lot to do with it, but you're right. How much can one body take? Right, right. Hey, in other news, okay, we, you and I were talking about, I don't think it, did it make last week's podcast or maybe the after show wrap up but about facebook in uh australia oh yeah 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 That's a, that you know you were right perry that is a ginormous up. story mm -hmm. okay so uh facebook just handed its critics in washington a lot of ammunition social media giants bullying of australia worsens its problems at home and uh, so should that it it's come about like the question said should social media pay for news content are you and I news content? Are they publishers? This is what it comes back to because every social media platform, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, they're just riding the backs of everybody publishing stuff. They're not doing anything but providing a platform. And, you know, people, we work, you and I, we work hard on this, putting this out. Yeah, yeah. But, but think about the news companies that are, their whole jobs, the, their economic well-being is for, for producing content that Facebook is just pushing out without paying for whatsoever. So this has come about. Well, what just happened uh, uh, yesterday, I think it was that I read that Facebook pledges to invest a billion dollars in news uh, in the net for over the next three years after Australia standoff ends. I have the link for that article in here. It's a CNBC article. And uh, this is uh, last month, Facebook announced details with a number of publishers in the UK as well. That was last month. These include The Guardian, Telegraph Media Group, Financial Times, Daily Mail Group, and Sky News. Uh, 
so they have struck deals with Australia for a billion dollars to pay news outlets to share their news. Now, uh, this I don't I don't see where I had in my notes, but I remember I think I texted you about. Uh, so Google said this is in my notes somewhere, but uh, Google said that they've been paying news companies for a while now. And we all know what Google's stance on censorship is, and it's mm -hmm. uh, pretty precarious. And yeah. So what do you think about this as these social media companies start having to uh, make deals with news outlets, with the media? Uh, yeah, I think <clears throat> I, I think that uh, there's a big red flag, actually, on, on several levels. Uh, one is that pay, having to pay for the news, where do you draw the line, I think, is the big question. And you were alluding to it is, OK, does that mean they would pay for our show as well? And what that uh, uh, since that's uh, sort of a nebulous line, the sky's the limit is how I see it which could ruin social media as we know it today, because we're taking away from that free internet kind of thing mm -hmm. where we can freely share information. I think that there's, there's some more thought that needs to go into that. Of course, Australia passed a law. So that's the law of the land over there. <clears throat> now, here's what I found interesting about that story, Barry, is that Australia, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're passing a law and while they're doing this, they're working with Facebook on this. And before anything is finalized, Facebook cuts off all news or something to Australia. They, they I think they cut off all the news that they, did. The, that they were being provided. So in the meantime, Facebook used their strength and their leverage to influence Australia by taking this thing away from them. It shows the power that a... Yes. a company like Facebook has over an entire country. And I think that's the scary part about yes. these tech giants is the, the, the amount of, of power that they're wielding uh, against another country when it comes to providing information, which could be a ginormous security aspect and, and something that all countries should be looking at. Um, I think that we're now in an age with these tech giants that people on uh, here in America, that people on both sides of the aisle can agree that we've crossed into a pretty dangerous area and possibly a, a threat to our, our own uh, national security. I agree with that because what concerns me right away, first and foremost, is you know, we know that most mainstream media is owned by X amount of companies. It's, it's very small amount, very small amount. So if they're getting, they're going to be bedfellows with social media, which is uh, really borderline mind control as it is. This really has me uh, worried about, you know, free speech beyond free speech, uh, just conditioning people to think as, as they want. Well, we know one thing that free speech here in America is under attack. It's under attack and has been really around the world forever. Yeah. But uh, this is really the last bastion of hope for free speech. And we're right. seeing what's happening to it. Uh, just transitioning a little bit here. Have sure. you heard about the Equality Act that's uh, coming onto the House floor? I think it came onto the House floor yesterday. No, I haven't. So these are some things that uh, ha are happening in Washington right now, now that we have Joe Biden as the president and, and they've got a majority in the Senate and also the, the House. And we're seeing a very different uh, flavor coming out of Washington, D.C. This one's called the Equality Act. And I think it's important for us to know what they're talking about over there and how <clears throat> things are working. The Equality Act would sacrifice the hard-won rights of women while privileging men who identify as women. This is written by the New York Post. So obviously this is their spin on this whole thing. But if it comes becomes law, such men would have <clears throat> a right to spend the night in battered women's shelters, disrobed in women's locker rooms and compete on women's sports teams. We're seeing a lot of that happening right now, and this is what's on the, uh, the House floor right now. But there's some interesting aspects about this that could be concerning, especially to uh, conservatives. But I think these are things that uh, should be concerning to everybody because what we're seeing here is we're seeing some things that um, 
uh, are a little bit different than before. So remember the Civil Rights Act was to protect against racism. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the gender uh, identity stuff into that uh, Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that if you are a religious organization, for instance, and you're saying, well, according to my religion, because by the way, uh, this would avoid the Religious uh, Freedom Act. Um, the Equality Act supersedes that. So let's say, for instance, a transgender woman wants to be the pastor of this church and it's against the religion. Well, they'll put they'll shut down the church and throw those people in jail. Um, <clears throat> hmm. That that's uh, this is what's being debated right now. The act would also massively expand the governor government's regulatory reach. Uh, the act would coerce any establishment that provides a good, a service, a program, including a store, shopping center, online retailer, service provider, salon, bank, gas station, food bank, service or care center, uh, a center shelter travel agency or funeral parlor or establishment that provides health care, accounting or legal services or anybody that gets federal funding would fall under this. So in other words, this feels more like a way of government to control really business rather than something to actually help with LGBTQ rights. Uh, because really, we're using a stick to make these things happen. And that typically doesn't work very well but these no. are regulatories uh that would cause fines to massive fines and regulation to companies which seems to be more what the goal is hmm. there's a lot of stuff to unpack there one last thing in this article it says the icing on the cake the act treats any refusal to offer abortion as pregnancy discrimination so um, I don't know, that's a weird way of putting it, pregnancy discrimination, because it's they're trying to end the pregnancy. And then also the name, the Equality Act, actually makes some people a lot less equal. It's kind of weird. I don't know how to weigh in on that, because I, I, this is the first I've I've heard of it, to be honest. So what you've armed me with is all I got. But so I'm tr I want to be open minded. And if uh, trans people feel that their rights are being violated, that uh, I certainly it's kind of like I look at it like gay marriage of 20 years ago, the issue there. And, and I'd say that most people would be approaching that subject like we are here, like, can you believe like, with, you know, uh, we've never had to deal with that before. Why now? Where does it end? Blah, blah, blah. So I, I want to keep an open mind on that. But there's yeah. another side that I know as well, is that the more that they divide people up into their different identity groups, the more they're going to stumble upon each other. And this, they're already doing it. So as soon as you create a, uh, another recognized identity group like trans and uh, bend over backwards to change rules for them, well, you're screwing women now and you're supposed to be all about women's rights uh, a, a couple of years ago. Um, we talked about this recently. So if trans, uh, if biological men are going to go out for women's sports and destroy all those records and take those scholarships away from those women and not to mention their achievements, uh, then it's, I mean, women, I would think would be extremely offended by this. And it, there's my point. The more I, I, identity groups that you go and try to do this for, the more you're going to be a hypocrite well, by stomping on another. I, yeah, and I think it, I think by I think the problem with this isn't. Let me let me rephrase it. Uh, the good thing about this is that they're trying to make it so that people have equal rights, right? That's good. Yes. People should have equal rights. Totally. People that are transgender should not be discriminated against. Agreed. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, you know the the definition of of liberty here and freedom in the United States is that you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as long as it doesn't interfere with somebody else's life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. How so, very libertarian of you. Yeah. So and and I mean that is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And uh, what this law does is it 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 does uh, help in some ways, but it does take 
religious liberty away from other groups. Uh, it also blurs the line on things that people believe in as science. And you were supposed to believe the science regarding gender so that if somebody wants to speak about the science after this law passes, they'll be shut down and possibly charged or arrested because they're speaking about something that has been an accepted truth for thousands of years. So I think that's the problem. Making it a law is a problem. Educating and using things to cause more friendly relations is probably a much better way of going about something like this. I agree with that completely. And that's in that really follows kind of like the old established credo of freedom, you know, is to educate rather than to strong arm people. And I've felt for years that we should have committees that look for laws to repeal at this point. We mm. don't need more and more laws. Boy, I would agree with that. Right. Big time. Right. Um, Hey, let's leave this subject for a second. And something I wanted to cover from last week was that the Supreme Court was actually looking at uh, the uh, the the election again, and they put they picked up the Pennsylvania argument and several others last week, this week to take a look at to see if they would go ahead and pick these up as cases. Mm. They denied all of it. Um, and it was really interesting how it worked out because you had uh, these um, justices that uh, dissented from the rejection, and it was Justice Thomas, uh, Justice Alito, and um, one other one. Um, and they were these were all the um, the conservatives here, but uh, they were all dissenting. But you also had conservatives that uh, like Justice Roberts, Kavanaugh, and uh, the new one, Amy Comey. The Con Coney Barrett, they uh, they rejected the um, the whole court case here, which I thought was interesting. And the reason for it was they were saying that it wouldn't change the outcome of the election. And um, I thought that that was an interesting reason for not hearing the case because, yeah, we it, it, the election wasn't going to get changed by these, but there were accusations of election fraud that were out there that mm -hmm. seemed to carry some weight that it seemed like, well, hey, shouldn't we take a look at this and protect against some type of nefarious activity that could happen in a future election? The Supreme Court is supposed to guard against those kinds of things. It is a failsafe for those kinds of things. For So not seeing the court case for that reason really rubbed me the wrong way. And, and if you'll remember, when they tried to rush this through earlier, the reason that they said they wouldn't see it before was because it was being brought by Texas, and they said Texas didn't have standing in this. But when you really look at it, Texas should have had standing on this because it completely affected who gets elected president affects Texas as well. So mm -hmm. I just wonder about the Supreme Court these days, especially since as a conservative, we saw three conservatives added to the Supreme Court, which makes a clear majority of conservatives. And they seem to have consistently gone the opposite way of their beliefs ever since we've had that majority in there. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it seems pretty clear. Mm, I think if you really took a look at that objectively, that should actually uh, incentivize your trust in our in our process that right. I, I think that uh, in my opinion, like, geez, something like 59 of the 60 cases filed against the election election fraud were dismissed. Uh, um, and why I, it, I, it was almost every time on a technicality, nothing I, to do with the actual case. Uh, I think that the election fraud, voter fraud uh, scenario was really way overblown and it's kind of like I remember Parler at that time, which I had just joined free, a few yeah. weeks prior. And I was thinking, wow, OK, man, finally, uh, a, a free speech platform and we could really get a foothold in here with our podcast and stuff. But I told you back then, as I was going through there, like, I don't even feel comfortable posting on there. I feel like I get ripped to shreds because everything on there was like radically far right. I mean, it was it was like a freaking uh, movement, but 
But I also remember thinking that this time, I literally remember thinking because of the post that I was seeing, I could take a picture of boxes in my attic right now and post it on there and say, I worked on the uh, committee here in Cleveland and I found all these boxes full of uh, Republican ballots. And dude, I was, I'm sure it would have went to viral to 2 million people and we would have had a uh, 500,000 followers at that point. So if I thought that, I'm sure a lot of other people thought that and actually acted on it. So I, I think there was a lot of hysteria. I think the condemnation taking down parlor is a huge issue. And as we've said in uh, our battle for free speech and all that, but, and this is just me talking. I did not read that anywhere. It's just me thinking this stuff through. Right. right. That what I saw going on on parlor was hysteria and that's not good either. But what's right? I mean, I believe in free speech at the end of the day, uh, above all else. But I'm, I'm just my mind is open to the fact that all these issues that we talk about, we, we just talked about Facebook, what's going on with that and buying the news and implications of that. Uh, um, I don't have the answers. I don't I don't know. But we need to keep this discussion going because it's about the most important thing we have going on in our lives right now. I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, and I look at it as, you know, you you mentioned the scenario of voter fraud just in this past election. But uh, in the 2016 election, it was mostly the Democrats that were saying that there was voter fraud. And so really from both sides of the aisle, they've claimed over the last five years voter fraud. And now it's become this big unsolved mystery. And it's really up to the Supreme Court to come in to protect democracy, to do the investigations, to actually um, settle this once and for all so that we can move forward in a healthy way. And so my whole thing is to not look at it because it wouldn't change the outcome of the election is probably not the way to look at it. Justice Thomas actually said, we had the opportunity to finally weigh in on this and settle this once and for all, and we passed it up. How is this going to help and protect us in the future? And uh, three of the justices all agreed with that sentiment. The other ones went the other way. So to me, it's an unsolved thing that we'll probably now revisit in 2024 and further degrade our trust in the electoral system. I, I think that I what the Supreme Court had an opportunity to do was restore faith in our electoral system, and they passed on that. So who else is going to do it? It's well, no one. OK, but again, uh, a mostly conservative Supreme Court uh, is basically telling you that there is a, a level of trust that you should have with our system. And yet that's not what you want to hear. And no, I don't know if that's it. I, I see um, a, a I'm, I'm concerned about the choices that Trump made and, and how as soon as they got in there, they seem to have forgotten their conservative values. Because that, that I didn't does tell not... you what you wanted to hear. See, no, what I think. No, I no, think... that's that's wrong. That's but, not true. Uh, OK, that's not true. But I they... think that there's such a level of distrust right now that, as you said, in 2016, it was the Democrats because they didn't get the, their way, uh, their way. And tw uh, 2020, uh, conservatives didn't get their way. So they level the accusation. No, you're, you're missing what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying that this is a problem on both sides of the aisle. The, mm -hmm. the Democrats said voter fraud. The Republicans said voter fraud. So we have an American problem now. And the Supreme Court, it's their job to weigh in on these things constitutionally. And they're, they've chosen not to do that. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett, as a conservative, said that she was an originalist. And an originalist, uh, as an originalist, the Constitution says that the Supreme Court is supposed to take a look at these kinds of things. The excuse of no standing and it wouldn't change the outcome. These are not excuses that the Constitution supports. So when you said they're not saying what I want, no, it's more they said that they would do a certain thing as justices when they were being uh, when they had the, the whole Senate hearings and everything for their uh, 
for their uh, uh, approval. And then they didn't do what they said they would do. That's my problem. Okay. Well, I certainly think that there needs to be uh, addressed a way to get more buy-in uh, trust from the public. Uh, I don't know I agree what with that. that. Pro- yeah. yeah, I don't know what that yeah. process would entail. But I, I don't really I don't think either. it's. I'm important. glad I don't have to figure it out. But I totally well, agree that that's in, that's really important. It and it this seem- isn't a partisan thing. This this yeah. is a our election integrity is under attack, and that affects everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I'm concerned about that, and I I think that uh, you know the next time a Republican wins, then the Democrats are going to say this, and the next time a Democrat, yeah, that's my point. It's going to be forever and ever. It's yeah. really up to the Supreme Court uh, when cases are presented like this to to weigh in on this kind of th- stuff to to figure out excuses not to weigh in, and that's really what's happened. There's been no judgment on any of these cases. There's just been excuses not to look at these things. That's really frustrating to mm-hmm. me. Hey, let's so, move on real quick. Oh, oh the I, I just wanted to say that I'm quite sure that in every election since the very first election in history, there's been a degree of voter fraud uh, in every election. Yeah, and um, I th- so you just want to minimize it as much as possible so that it doesn't hopefully affect the true outcome. I, yeah. Right. Now, and I just think maybe the solution that could be to win over trust would be uh, a hybrid of both electronic and a backup with paper ballots and then compare the two. And there's got to be an efficient system to do that. That's the you, only you thing would, I could think of. You would think. Yeah. And, and of course, my mind goes to uh, electronic, easy to hack. Um, that's why the, you do the, the other the, side the count uh, easy the people have been screwing that up too it's a, the problem is people yeah, yeah very true. <laughs> we got people involved that's what the problem very is. very true want to get uh, to the lighter side and start wrapping up but i got a feeling you got something else that you want to share i i, I have there's way too many things that are happening i got the, a ton of very well. yeah yes, i mean I it's, 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 it's it, we can't cover everything it's almost overwhelming all the things that are happening in the news i i have a bunch of stuff right here but we should just go to the lighter side. We're, we're, <laughs> okay. yeah, we'll hit the, we'll hit some of this yeah, in our yeah. after show. By the way, uh, I just put the fir- for the first time the link to the after show in our email. So I'm going to try to remember to do that consistently now because we've had uh, people inquire about it. We do an after show wrap up where we generally talk about things that don't make it into our regular show. Uh, so we will be doing that in a few minutes. Right now, I'm going to uh, start wrapping this up with the lighter story. And Merle, do you see this uh, Atlanta career? creates the nation's largest free food forest. Oh, free food forest. Wow. Yes. Never yeah. heard of that before. Well, basically, I'm going to try to go fast because there's a video I want to share with you, a, a dog video. That's great. Dog sled riding. Um, but basically, Atlanta, and this sounds like it's a uh, really just starting off an urban food forest at Brown Mill is the first city owned and managed food forest. So it has like 50 volunteers that are harvesting these these foods, uh, vegetables, uh, fruits, herbs, and mushrooms become available for public consumption for free, which just made me think, why doesn't every city do this across America? You know, Mm. and uh, with what your climate can sustain, but why doesn't every city do this and offset the food stamp thing? And so people, instead of, uh, uh, Big Macs and stuff, they have an opportunity to get free fruits and vegetables. So I think it's a fantastic thing. We'll see how it goes. They, uh, are uh, in this article, they're talking like it's, um, it's very much, uh, just a startup at this point. So I think that's a, a wonderful idea though. And now I don't. Yeah, uh, I wanted to show you this uh, video of this dog sled who t- who learned how to sled ride. Why is this not? What is it? Oh, it's going to Instagram. Why? 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 Okay, here we go. So he's pulling the sled up the hill. You see this? And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, so he, he does this repeatedly. He is pulling the sled up the snowy hill by himself. Just now jumps on, <laughs> rides uh, all the way down. Now look, it looks like he's gonna hit this. Uh, holy shed. cow! Yeah, look, look, he, he look can steer him. it. Yes, and he, look, and he picks he, it. Back he had to up. look back where he was before. Yes. Look at it. Hey, hey look what I just did. And he's coming back up the hill he with goes. the sled again to go again. What a look at wow. him! This wow. is wow. 
<laughs> great dog that is. I like yeah, that. No kidding. Uh, so that's our lighter slide aside. That's the show. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Merle, I yeah, please you subscribe. Know, I'll be talking to you while I'm on vacation. Uh, can't wait. It's gonna be nice. Yeah. Good luck. And have all right, everybody. One. Thanks a bunch. Talk to you next week. Love you guys. Yep.